Good morning, this is Drew Erickson talking about money, not math. Uh, today I'm highlighting an article from Forbes.com titled, Congress Set to Pass Secure Act at Last Minute, Impacting Retirement Planning and Increasing Taxes. Uh, by Jamie Hopkins, who's a contributor for retirement plan uh, on the Director of Retirement Research at Carson Wealth. So I just want to highlight a couple things before I keep going, and I'm going to re-say the title, or part of the title, Impacting Retirement Planning and Increasing Taxes. So just keep that in mind as I'm discussing and highlighting portions of this, of this uh, article. I'm not going to read the whole thing because that would take a long time. Um, but the first part that I want to highlight is they said the... Uh, or he says that the uh, the most the room okay sorry the most important so there's gonna be at the end there's gonna be eight points he, that he highlights that I'm gonna talk about I'll read and then re just kind of give my reaction to him but before I get into that the main point of this whole article and he says the most important provision of the Secure Act is the removal of stretch RMD RMD stands for Required Minimum Distribution Provisions is a tax revenue generator for the government not for anyone else, meaning a tax hike on many Americans. This goes into effect January 1st, 2020, assuming President Trump signs the bill into law, which seems all but a foregone conclusion. The removal of the required minimum distribution provisions for stretch IRAs for many beneficiaries will cause chaos for certain types of trusts written prior to this bill. Trusts written as so-called pass-through trusts could have to be reformed to match up with this current Secure Act language. If not, existing trust language could restrict access to funds to heirs of trusts listed as the beneficiaries of IRAs and cause massive tax bills down the line. Massive tax bills down the line. Instead of being able to stretch RMDs out over the life of a beneficiary, many will have to take all of RMDs of a, ret of a retirement account by the end of year 10 after an account owner passes away. This can push higher RMDs into the prime working years and highest tax years of a beneficiary. So before I move on, I just want to highlight a couple of things. They, they, when Congress passes things like this, they call it the Secure Act, and I didn't read the whole what it stands for, Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Enhancement Act. So they, they, they're saying they're doing it to help people retire and make it easier for people to retire, but really what they're doing is causing uh, uh, creating another opportunity to generate more taxes. And, and as far as I read in here, they aren't at any point taking those extra taxes they generate and distributing them to the to other people. So really they're just generating more taxes and then changing some rules around uh, other retirement options. So we'll go into those eight points now and respond to them. Point number one, increase small employer access to retirement plans. So Title I, Section 101 of the bill makes some significant changes to a variety of retirement rules. It expands the ability to run multiple employer plans and make the process easier overall. It essentially allows small employers to come together to set up and offer 401k plans with less fiduciary liability concern and less cost than exists today. The goal here is to try to expand small employers' capability to offer some form of retirement savings to employees. This has generally seen a frustration of previous legislative attempts as the simple and SEP IRAs were developed in part to achieve this outcome, but ultimately have not filled in as a broadly utilized retirement savings plan for small employers. As such, the SECURE Act will take another stab at this huge issue as many small employers offer no retirement savings options at all, leaving the issue slowly on the, solely on the individual. That last sentence is so accurate, guys, or people, whoever is willing to watch this. The SECURE Act will take another stab at this huge issue as many small employers offer no retirement savings options at all, leaving the issue solely to the individual. At the end of the day, it is 100% up to us to plan for our retirement. It's not the government's responsibility. It's not your employer's responsibility. It's ours, right? So what your if you have group op retirement plans, that's awesome. But keep in mind, it's not actually a plan. It's a tool. Just like a, a driver, if you're playing golf, is one of the clubs, but it's not the whole plan, right? So if you don't, we have to understand how does your group plan work with your outside planning and what overall, how is it all going to work together? So that's just, I, I'm really passionate about that idea because I think too many people show up to work, know they have their group, they have their group retirement options and they're like, oh, I'm good to go. I have a plan. But we have to ask ourselves, do we truly understand how that, how that one works? 
Do we understand how much we're contributing and where that, those contributions are going, how much they're hopefully going to grow, what they need to grow to to fund the retirement that we need once we get there, and how are they going to be taxed once we get to retirement? Right, so these are just all these things that just because you're in a, an option, it doesn't mean you actually have a plan. So I highly recommend building a plan with someone that you trust. Number two, increase annuity options inside retirement plans. Section 204 seeks to update the safe harbor provision for plan sponsors to select annuity providers in order to offer in-plan annuities inside of a 401k. Today, many 401ks stay away from annuities in part because of concerns about liability and picking an annuity pro provider for the plan. The new rules would essentially ease this liability concern to some degree, potentially opening up the path for more annuities to be offered inside of retirement plans. Now, this is a decent option or it's a decent addition. I guess I think time will tell on how helpful this actually is. Um, for those that don't know, it, annuities can be built in very in many different ways, um, but oftentimes the, uh, the purpose of putting money in an annuity is to guarantee lifetime income. So guarantee that you can't outlive your money. However, the money you put in an annuity more often than not won't grow as fast as money that you have invested directly in the market. So you're trading off high risk for guaranteed reward, essentially, um, or high, high risk, high reward. You're trading that for guaranteed income for life, if depending on how the annuities are built. Number three, increase required minimum distribution ages. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. Essentially, today, if you invest in a traditional 401k, IRA, or et cetera, um, you have from the ages 59 and a half to 70 and a half, you have complete control over what you do with your money. At 70 and a half, required minimum distributions, RMDs, start, and that's when the government uses a formula to tell you how much of your money you have to take out at minimum. They're pushing that back to 72. All right, so uh, that may, may big, make a bit out that, that year and a half could make a big difference if you really don't need the money, um, but it's not going to help a lot of the people on the lower end of the spectrum planning for retirement in improving their retirement. So I don't believe. So uh, number four, removal of age limitation on IRA contributions. So for years, there has been a rule that essentially discouraged retirement savings in IRAs for people who continue to work later in life. After age 70 and a half, you could no longer contribute to an IRA, but you could, could still contribute to a Roth IRA the SECURE Act removes this savings limitation by repealing the age limitation for traditional IRA contributions. Here is a very important thing to remember. They are taking, a, they are allowing us to put more money in tax deferred traditional IRAs past the age of 70 and a half. So they're basically encouraging you to keep deferring the tax and saving into an IRA as you get older and older. However, they are also making it a lot harder for your beneficiaries to enjoy any money you leave behind. So on one hand, they're saying, all right, great, defer your IRA longer, defer your taxes longer. But on the other hand, they're saying, once you pass away, oh, we're gonna get those taxes from your beneficiaries. So just make sure you're very aware of the, 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 um, re the repercussions of the decisions we make and deferring taxes to a later date, especially if it's your intention to leave money to uh, your beneficiaries. So tax credit for on automatic enrollment, they're essentially offering a $500 tax credit to small business employers that offer group plans or group options. I don't think they should be called plans per, per my previous event. Um, number six, penalty free distributions for birth of a child or adoption. So they're adding a rule that within one year of adopting a child or having a child, you can, t you can uh, distribute $5,000 from an IRA or 401k with no 10% uh, tax penalty. Uh, number seven, lifetime income disclosure for defined contribution plans. They are going to require that once every 12 months, your group uh, retirement option or company sends you a projection of how much it's going to pay, that money will pay you in retirement. However, they even admit they have no idea how they're going to calculate that. So that's kind of a, I don't know, I don't know how much merit that really has, considering I don't know what variables they're going to use yet. So uh, a lot of that has to come down to safe withdrawal rules and things like that. Number eight, removal of stretch inherited IRA provisions. I already covered this, but I think it's important enough to read again, because this goes back to number four, where they allow you to defer your taxes longer and put more money in tax uh, tax deferred IRAs and that, then they removed the stretch inherited IRA so they I'm not going to read the whole thing but essentially like I said they make it so that if you current in today's if you pass away 
and leave an IRA to a beneficiary, they have a longer extended period of time to distribute that money so they can avoid taxes and having a bunch of lump sum taxes. Because imagine if you pass on $5 million, your beneficiaries don't want to pull all that out really quickly because then their ta income tax is going to go is going to skyrocket. Well, now they're basically saying that if you leave one million, ten million, however much money, one hundred thousand dollars to your beneficiaries, they have to distribute and use that money within ten years, which could dramatically affect their income taxes, which is how the IRS is going to get their taxes in the long run. So I think it's actually almost a bit of a trick to to encourage you to contribute to tax deferred retirement accounts only to basically um, tax your beneficiary even harsher for any money you leave behind. So please let me know if uh, today, that's the end of today's conversation. Uh, interesting changes coming. Hopefully uh, this video brings you value and helps you better prepare for the changes in your retirement going forward. Please give me, uh, let me know what you think by leaving a comment or reaching out to me. If you like the, vi the video or the podcast, please like it or even better yet, share it with a friend. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.